We're going to come back and talk to Greg Capozzi. He's a local songwriter and performer for a couple segments right here at PCMC. That was marvelous. <laughs> Greg Capozzi is on with us now. He's a songwriter and musician. He actually has a background in music that is educated in the form of being um, a, a graduate of Duquesne University and has a master's at the esteemed school of uh, Eastman School of Music. Uh, before we get into him and his story and more background on him, he released a new uh, CD, a video recently, if you will, and this is just a portion of it. <laughs> CDs since 2002, uh, and he is about to release what you just saw, and it is going to actually uh, be released, I believe, in the fall, I think September uh, to be exact. Uh, it is a CD, Caught Me at the Border. That's the uh, names uh, of that particular song. It was recorded in, I believe, October of 14, and uh, the music video uh, was made in May of 15. I, I bring that all together, Greg. First of all, welcome you to the show. Ellis, thanks for having me on. Real pleasure. It's um, my pleasure. Th 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 that is extremely well produced. Oh, it's amazing what talent is in this city. All done through networking, close friends, just people that you know on a budget that, you know, anybody who's serious about their music can really afford if you really have that drive to want to do it. And it's interesting because you heard uh, Dory and Mark talk a little bit earlier about how serious you have to be in order to make, uh, you know, the commitment that uh, ultimately you need to be successful and in their case to be basically attractive enough for them to work with. Uh, your story, uh, and I mentioned 14 CDs, a variety of genres. Man, you have a story. Mm. Well, you know, this goes back to when I was nine years old when I just started to play the piano. I've always had a passion for music, and, uh, you know, if it's in your soul, it's going to be with you. You're going you're gonna to keep it with you. You might have got sidetracked with work or other occupations. Things come up and go and, and steer you off course, but if it's in your soul, you will, it will return to you, and you can't let it go. You have to... This particular uh, track that we just saw, I mean, this is what I would, you know, I mean, I think of it as traditional rock and roll mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in, in that particular way. But it's a departure in some respects. Is it not from more liturgical or, for that matter, CCM uh, type of music that you've had? Yeah, the contemporary Christian music genre and the liturgical, uh, you know, for church, uh, convention, spiritual, that those kinds of things is pretty much what I've done since 2002. Um, I've always loved secular music, always had a thing for rock, a classic rock. You mentioned Elton John at the beginning. He mm -hmm. was a huge influence for me. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I mean, you know, uh, all of these things were there 
then, you know, life kind of gets in the way and things happen and change. And, you know, uh, something happened inside of me and uh, my heart came alive. And this this is the product. That's, this is the new direction we're going. Well, two things. First of all, I mean, when I talk to an artist, whether it be literally in a painting sense or somebody that does stuff with technology or production or, in your case, a performer, uh, it, it is amazing how it has to, first of all, come from the soul for it to be real. That, that's number one. Amen. And number two... This truly, uh, just reading about you and learning your background and watching some videos, you, you, this, there's a real backstory here, mm -hmm. uh, and the backstory is a very personal one. Uh, you're is. pretty public about that. Now, a phrase I've used many times in my life: life sometimes gets in the way. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you know, and I don't mind sharing it because you know, without the faith that I had in God, I couldn't have gotten through some of the dark periods that were uh, mm -hmm. that, that, that we had to endure. You know. I went to college for seven years thinking I'm going to go out and do something in the musical career field, be it teacher or, you know, studio musician, something. And I ended up uh, becoming an electrician of all things. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I just figured that that's where God had me and that's the direction we were going. And, you know, I got married, we had started a family, built a house, and all of those kinds of things happened. And, uh, and, and no regrets there. I mean, you know, it's just... Just so many blessings that came from that. But, you know, I guess what happens is, and this may be getting into the personal part, which I'll, I'll share just a little. Yeah. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot. This no, is... but I think everybody identifies with it, with, with it because, you know, you know it's, everybody has a struggle. Everybody carries a cross, so to speak. And, um, you know, it wasn't like anybody was looking for it. You don't wake up one day and say, hmm, how can I, you know, get divorced? Or how can I get, you know, become a whatever but it just it just happens I, I got busy with work you know I think she got busy with the kids and we kind of drifted apart I mean I own up to everything that was my end of it I'm not here trying to pretend that you know it was a, a no as I said a, you're public about that and I'm not <clears throat> trying to beat you up on it it's just that frankly it's it's reflective of your music but and that's thank you that's where I'm going with this um something after I was finally able to get that behind me and and release that my heart came alive, and for the first time, I was like, you know, on fire. And I was, stuff was just pouring out of me. And we just started this new album, and but something else happened too. Is, well, what, can we hold on that so I hear that? Absolutely, we'll come back. That's a great okay. tease, actually. It's something else happened too. So we'll talk about that another segment with Greg a little bit later. We'll be talking about uh, Bigfoot, the movie. Uh, it's quite interesting, and we'll do that before we adjourn. But right now, we'll come back to Kirk. Pardon me, Greg Cabosi. Greg Capozzi is a Pittsburgh guy, graduated in 1980 from Bethel Park High School, and as I mentioned, he uh, educated at Duquesne and ultimately at Eastman School of Music. Uh, he also is the owner of G. Capozzi Electric, LLC. Uh, we're talking about his music uh, and, and uh, uh, his music uh, that is going to be coming out in the form of a new CD release. Uh, I believe it would be his 15th, and that would be Caught Me at the Border. We played a little bit of it just a few minutes ago. Um, right before we went to break, he said, and then something else happened that basically leads to this music that we're looking at today, which again is more of a traditional rock style compared to some of the other things you've done. Absolutely, and I'm sure anybody that's been through a trial knows that, you know, things are going to happen, and although you get this, this fire that came alive inside my heart, at the same time, for the first time in 26 years, I'm noticing other people and what they could mean in my life and I could mean in their life, and, and so temptation for the first time became a, 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 a huge, huge thing in my life. I never had to, you know, deal with or struggle mm -hmm. with something like that. I was faithful to my marriage. Mm -hmm. So uh, this song was written as a, as a product, and, and a lot of the songs that are on the album are written about the struggle of temptation and reconciliation as well. It's tried to do that at the end of the video clip. Sure. Um, and, and that was really what what this song is driving about is just the struggle that everybody deals with and you know you want to do if it's in your soul then you know what's right and wrong. well there's really no road map in life so to speak number one and and i suspect to the extent that your business or your music or your feeling and soul reflects that pathway it can go in a number of different directions like you said life gets in the way you have i believe lyrics that read uh, or i heard i believe i have it i played it back a few times you're in the end zone she's in the friend zone i'm in the head zone and you caught me at the border that's the hook and what does that mean 
You're in the end zone is God. He's the final goal. She's in the friend zone, and that's where the temptation is coming in. I'm in the head zone because I'm all mm -hmm. messed up. And he caught, you caught me, God caught me at the border. Now, that can also be interpreted a couple other ways, but that's the main interpretation of mm -hmm. that particular. Okay, so, so, so then again, we're talking about, again, life reflecting art, uh, art reflecting life. It has to. I mean, if it's, it's, everything is about a circumstance that's going on in your life. Every song has a story to tell, and it's generally, if it's going to be genuine, it's going to have some kind of personal element that people can identify with, and hopefully it's going to have some kind of, uplifting element that people can take away from it that they can, you know, use in them. Well, I mean, you're telling a story, either musically or in this in, uh, uh, conversation, as I call it, uh, that connects with people. I mean, yes. I mean, th that really is the ultimate goal for any conversation, whether it be about music or anything. There's got to be something out there that connects to people. There are people right now who can identify with probably several different things that you've reflected about yourself and or your music. I mean, uh, that, I would believe, is a touchstone to any success uh, in, in your field, is being able to, in fact, emotionally, if not intellectually, connect with the person. Absolutely. The music will bring in the genre of your audience, but the lyrical message is the passion, and that's how people communicate. Not everybody can play guitar or piano. The, you know, the, the lyric is really where you're able to tell that story and communicate. That. Where do you want to go from here? You want to, you want to have a tour? I'd love to do a tour. Uh, you know, we've been doing mostly the liturgical church events, conferences, that kinds of stuff. We do benefit concerts every now and then, but we're we're thinking about you know doing something with this particular album when it's released, and um, even if it's just something from September through. Uh, uh, December, maybe a half a dozen to ten, ten gigs mm -hmm. locally, you know, uh, Morgantown, Wheeling, Steubenville, Pittsburgh area really hit mm -hmm. hard. Like, just big show, big lights, big production stage. And, and, and I have to interrupt there, if you don't mind, because I think that that's something you talked about the, or at the outset, and this was, again, this is sort of a neat night because we're sort of just flowing from one conversation to the other with a lot of similarities in between. You were mentioning that all the studio, the, the musicians, the, the videos, oh, the camera, the, the, you talked about Pittsburgh being rich in that. That's why I went through the timeline, because it seems pretty quick to me. And, and, and I know that obviously that's something that our previous guests talked about, being able to uh, reach out and, and get. Talk about what Pittsburgh has that maybe a lot of people out there don't know. Well, the, the best advice that I can get is network and friendships. Building friendships and networking with other musicians, other people, promoters, marketers, people in video, people in sound, everybody that it was involved in this particular product was my friend. I know them. I mean, on a budget that it was as humble and meager as you can believe. Uh, am I allowed to mention names? Yeah, of course you are. Uh, I mean, I got to thank, first off, Chris Procopio. He was the producer. He's also the drummer in the mm -hmm. video. Um, and he just did a, a fantastic job with this video, assembling all of it. Um, Mike Ofka, Innovation Studios, did the audio work. Just a tremendous um, uh, amount of uh, uh, respect I have for Mike and his guitar playing. And he's also the guitar player. So we're, we're wearing several hats. I mean, there's so many people, my family, my friends, uh, the fans that are out there, I, I have to mention Father Bob Lubick and uh, Lisa Wilson, who graciously uh, uh, played the roles to help tell the story of this mm -hmm. video. They did. So many other people, I just can't. And please forgive me if I if I don't say they their do. name. But I do want you to remember one person, George Parfit. Oh, uh, my old buddy George. He's the man who runs the cameras and runs the show in a lot of ways. Very quickly, i got about 30 seconds. I don't think you have enough time, but George and I go way back. We graduated high school, and, you know, just uh, he's a friend, and he called me up a couple uh, couple days ago and said, hey, I got this show, blah, 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 here we are. So, but just an insider on George, some 30 years ago, when we were playing in, you know, the, the rock bands of the day, uh, I called him, hey, I need help move on my piano. Can you come help me? Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. Well, within days, he became the the tech guy, the light guy, the sound guy, everything. And um, we always kid him that, you know, us musicians were the ones trying to aspire. And he was the one that went on in 27 years with your network. Yeah, that's it's right. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Great it's friend, great guy. I know. And he speaks so highly of you. And I'll be able to as well. Thank wow. you so much. Alex, it was appreciate. a pleasure. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. All right, we come back. We're going to uh, get into Bigfoot the movie. You heard me address earlier that he has been killed. We're going to be talking about that and more next on PCMC. Lenape Hawkins, Western Pennsylvania.